There is a saying by Eleanor Roosevelt that it isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it, and it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. On that note, welcome to another episode of So This Happened. Here we review news which made a boss recently. My name is Margaret Osadua. Welcome to the show. It is indeed a beautiful sight to see Nigerians march out in unison and in one voice striving to achieve a common goal. I say this as regards the ongoing NSAS protest that has seen several Nigerian youths take to the streets calling on the government to listen to their NS plea. Now it all started with Nigerian celebrities Faust the Bad Guy, Naira Mali and Ron Town calling for a protest in Lagos before the Malian president Naira Mali made a dramatic U-turn and cancelled his supposed planned protest. Anyway, Fowles and Runtown continued with the protest, We saw Nigerian youth stormed the streets to demand an answer size. Answers! 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 So various tragic incidents involving the gruesome killings of Nigerian youths have frequently led to calls for the scrapping of the notorious police unit SARS. Notable among such killings are Kolade Jensen, Kazim Tiamu, Tina Ezekwe, and the list goes on and on. Major General Muhammad Dubuari retired, had condoled with these families and said that disciplinary measures were being put in place for those responsible for their deaths. With all of this being said, one would think that the senseless killings and assault would stop. But no, it didn't, which prompted Nigerian youth to stand up for themselves. Because of course, how else would their voices be heard? Meanwhile, Major General Muhammad Buhari retired, who held a meeting with the Inspector General of Police, revealed that he had been briefed about the reforms which would end police brutality. Subsequently, he addressed Nigerian youths via live broadcast. Here's what he had to say. Use this opportunity to say a word on the recent genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and in some cases extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. He further said that the disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reforms in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remain the protection of lives and livelihood of our people. Regardless, Nigerians were not having it, as most of them felt it wasn't the first time the presidency said they would protect them and failed woefully. The protest continued unabated, spreading nationwide with Lagos as the epic center. Protesters blocked off notable locations such as the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Lucky Target, and the Mortala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, causing hardship for road users. So a number of protesters were apprehended and some killed forcing a popular Nigerian rights activist, Aisha Yesufu, to accuse Major General Muhammad Buhari retired and Vice President Osibanjo of ordering the IGP to shoot at protesters. As Aisha Yesufu says, I still can't believe I'm neither dead nor in the hospital. Every step I took yesterday, walking away as men of the Nigerian police force shot at me, I braced myself for the moment of impact. It seems President Buhari and Professor Osibanjo gave IGP orders to shoot at protesters. Protesters. And you want them to stop? Really? Why kill them? All they ask is that you hear them. It's honestly really sad. I mean, if truly the safety of Nigerians are your priority, why not listen to them? Now, these are the demands of the youth. Immediate release of all arrested protesters. Justice for all deceased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for their families. Setting up an independent body to oversee the investigation and prosecution of all reports of police misconduct within 10 days. 
In line with the new Police Act, psychological evaluation and retaining to be confirmed by an independent body of all disbanded SARS officers before they can be redeployed. Increase police salaries so that they are adequately compensated for protecting lives and properties of citizens. How hard can it possibly be? You see, sometimes I often wonder how some people think. I mean, how does this mind of ours really work? I understand that before we take certain decisions, we think it through, right? Hmm. A woman in Uganda has been arrested for throwing her eight-month-old twins into a river. I am beyond shocked. I feel terrible that a human being can go to this length to prove whatever. Lily Oyela, a mother, has dumped her twin children in Oxstream some 500 meters away from her home on Saturday after she had a quarrel with her husband. According to reports, trouble started on Friday when the suspect was left waiting in vain after her husband, whom she gave money to buy some items for Independence Day celebration, spent it on drinking. Now, when the husband, Kenneth O'Call, returned on Saturday, he was confronted by his wife, forcing him to leave the house. Now, as a way to console herself, the suspect took the decision to drown her twins since her husband didn't want to be responsible for their care. I'm really hurt by this woman's action. How can you throw your babies inside a river because your husband hurt you? A whole nine months of hard work. Ha! Huh? Speaking to the Uganda Radio Network, Wilfred Inyeko with the Labongo Amida Sub-County Chairperson said that one of the children was rescued alive and currently receiving treatment at Kidgum General Hospital while the other one was found dead. The suspect, however, was immediately arrested while her husband is still at large. Ah, Otutu Mumini straight up. So on a lighter note, an Irish family who have been playing the lottery together for 25 years using the same set of numbers are celebrating after winning a jackpot of over 5 million euros. Yes. According to the Kilkenny father, while speaking with the National Lottery officials, he was queuing up in the shop when he spotted the numbers out of the corner of his eye on top of the newspapers. The overly excited man immediately dashed home and called the family meeting to inform his relatives. Wow, talk about luck. I'm certain that if he was driving, he was on a high speed. And if he was walking home, he was running like someone was chasing him. I mean, who wouldn't have to seen such a thing? A God that knows what's up now, having gone through tough times financially, said that there will be no reckless spending on new cars or any other thing for that matter, as they have to visit their individual banks to pay off their mortgages. After 25 years, playing the same numbers? <laughs> the most important question is this. Where did those numbers come from? Because as for me, one day, just one day, me too, I will win a lottery. One would think I've attempted one before with the way I just spoke. But yeah, well, the Wikikenis have opened my eyes. Hmm. 16, 15, 14, something like that. So with this, we'll wrap up to this episode of So This Happened. Feel free to like, share, follow, subscribe, and comment on our stories. Till next time, I am Margaret Osazua. Many thanks for watching. Bye.